as you can probably see by the title, we've got another student interview. I'm very excited for this one today. I'm interviewing Boyan. Now, when I first met Boyan, he was specializing in the e-com niche. He was making $3,500 per month, but he hadn't quite made the transition to an e-com agency. He then jumped on my mentorship and what happened was pretty insane. He was able to scale from $3,500 per month with his agency. Not a bad figure, especially for his age, but definitely nowhere near his potential. And he was able to scale his agency to $34,000 per month. Very excited to jump on this call with him because if you watch the Kassim interview, the one previous to this uh, last week, you will have realized that these conversations are value packed and that my whole goal is to dissect their wins, their losses, their mindsets, their routines, their, their hacks, their strategies, what, what has worked tremendously well for them, what didn't quite work for them, uh, and really dive deep into their journey. So without further ado, I don't want to make uh, Boyan wait, let's jump straight into the call. You know, you mentioned, uh, so currently you're, you're with the same marketing agency, um, and, and you mentioned one of the, the, the blissful things about it is that uh, you're experiencing what, like less, like less complexity, right, to, to your, your service delivery? Is there anything else to that? Um, I mean, emails is just something I enjoy more than Facebook ads. Like Facebook ads was, it, I feel like has a much higher learning curve, but mm. with emails, because it's slightly uh, more linear in nature that you're able to pick it up quicker. Um, but I mean, if you want to get to the higher levels, like it's, it's still a load of work, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah. it, I feel like it's slightly lower barrier to entry yeah. and it's yeah. slightly less saturated in terms of who's trying to sell email marketing in people's yeah. inboxes. Yeah. I, I would say like, zero to 85 percent is like much faster to get to than zero to 85 percent on facebook ads now 85 percent to like 100 percent of being an expert when it comes to clavio like yeah that is hard right but like as you said like uh like that you know that that curve if if you are trying to like become an expert at at, at, a, at a service like that that expertise curve is is um is faster obviously most people have contractors so like it's not, a, it's not a huge, like you don't have to be an expert at Facebook ads to offer Facebook ads. Um, in fact, I would never recommend you do, but I think, I think, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the benefits with Klaviyo. What do you, what do you like most about Klaviyo? Um, I, I like the interface, I guess. Are you, are you asking about the software specifically? Or yeah, 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 about... yeah. For, for okay. specifically for email marketing, why Klaviyo? Um, so Cause I love software it, software by the way. Huh? I, I, I fucking love Klaviyo, honestly. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've used OmniSend before and there's certain features in OmniSend that's just a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. Like one of them was the currency conversion issue. And I really went in on, on them on my uh, Clavio versus OmniSend video on YouTube, right? And I got partnered up with both platforms and then I felt really <laughs> bad because like the guy on the, uh, the, the rep, he's like head of Europe for OmniSend that I was chatting to. He's my account manager. He's telling me like, yo, can, can, is there any chance you could like go a bit easier on us on the currency issue because last year what happened was um, oh because you, you they saw the video yeah yeah that's why he he reached out to me to partner not not like i i didn't reach out to them okay, okay. i just wanted to be partnered with Clavio. Um, yeah yeah and also the like uh, you know clavio's like partner program is amazing uh, amazing honestly omni omni is actually better like you get way better really incentives. yeah for sure well okay but I mean, I, I but I, I mean, I mean that the, the training side of things. I mean, I mean that the, the the education portion is better when it comes to, uh, with Omnisend. I, I, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not talking about the the the, the actual like money side of things. Um, because like honestly, I, I don't think like that's a huge factor. Like you're you know hopefully you're not relying on on, like on, on the making, on the yeah. affiliate commissions. Yeah, but... then, then you're really doing your client dirty. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. But yeah, so I had an issue with Omnisend last year where uh, they don't convert currencies to one singular currency. So there's a okay. shit ton of misattribution. Um, yeah. Where we had an order from Japan that was like 75 pounds, uh, which is like 7,000 yen. So it says on the campaign, we did 7,000 in one sale. And it's like, and, and we take a percentage of that. So the client was like, you're not taking this. And he they got mad at us. Um, yeah, yeah. But then after going back and forth, you can't even delete the order you can't manually edit the amount either it's like yeah crazy it, do you switch like when when a when a client you know because uh, and, and the reason why, why i want to dive uh, deep into into uh email marketing um on this interview is because one of the things i, I do on my on my youtube channel is I, I tell people like hey and, and even with my mentorship like hey you don't have to pick paid ads like paid ads is amazing 
but you know email marketing is is equally as a flagship offer is you know that definitely an option so um when 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 someone come, when a client comes to you right and, and you sign this client and let's just say they're they're using omnisend okay or they're, they're using something else do you switch them over to Clavio? do you do that transition or you uh, adhere so to be honest Jaime, I don't have enough data right now. Like I was building out the fulfillment systems. So <clears throat> to give you a bit of context, Rick, November, late November is when I decided to pivot. And then December, I just took the month entirely off. So January, I was moving. So I only started working kind of mid-Jan again. Mm. Uh, and then mid-Jan to about end of Feb, I was just building out the fulfillment system. I also had a crack at BSLs. Didn't work. But like five. Because you were, you were running that, right? Yeah, I was running ads for like uh, two weeks. I was trying my hand at it. And then I just realized like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm offering a new service, basically starting a new agency. It doesn't make sense that I, I get into paid traffic straight away. Um, yeah, especially because you, you, may, you may not know the, the messaging that resonates just yet, right? Because you, you haven't jumped on enough. You haven't, I feel like if you haven't jumped on enough sales calls with uh, offering email marketing, you don't really know what the messaging should really look like. For sure. Because it's like all about identifying the right messaging. You're selling the same offer, sure, but it's like how, how do you put, uh, package it yeah. in a way that resonates with um, the prospect? hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why you know one of the things I I, I talk about in my mentorship, like yes, you need to create an, an irresistible offer, but that irresistible offer, you know, the components of that are going to be tweaked when you start jumping on those demo call strategy sessions. Because just by seeing what people resonate with, you're going to be like, oh. This this works like you know I, you know I, I I found that you know when I say this specific word when I when I frame it in this way you know their 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 I don't know their their light uh, their their eyes brighten up or something like that right um, and then you start kind of seeing what what things uh what things uh, they truly care about. There's like three angles mainly when it comes to email marketing. It's like uh, the one angle, and that's what I'm testing with email cold emails right now. Um, mm. There's like three angles, which is. Uh, the, the most simple one is like, hey, add 20% MRR to your bottom line, right? That, that, that's like the most basic one. But um, there's other ones where it's like, oh, you thought email marketing was dead. Well, let me show you some like the new way of doing it. Yeah. Or, there's, or there's like the, um, hey, you know, having a solid email conversion system in the, your back end will help you scale your ads because like it will just in, help you increase your target CPA. But like, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, there might be another one, like uh, uh, just just out of my head, like the massive opportunity cost, right? Like a bit, building a bit of uh, FOMO, because like most of these brands have, most of these brands, have, like I've I've come into brands um, where we started first doing the paid ads and then upsold them to to uh, you know cross sold them to uh, email marketing. It's like you already have so many fucking emails, right? Like you have thousands of of customers in your database. Like sending out a newsletter every single week is not enough, you know. Um, like you, you need to step this up. Like you, you know, if if you just build a few automated flows, like that's gonna pull in an extra four or five figures. Um, and, and also the fact that like email marketing, one of the great things. I mean, we, we can talk about this. Is like they're not paying. They they, they don't have ad spend, right? So it's easier it's on them. It's like it's like yo, like I, 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 if I make you money, right? You pay me. Like sure, you you can have a set of fee. Like you have a you know, pay to play or, or pay to pay attention uh, fee, fixed fee, but like, hey, like it's gonna be pure money. Like it's gonna be pure profit. Like uh, the, yeah. Yeah, dude, that, that's like the, the way I position it now. It's like, let's say I were to take, I don't know, 10% um, of the Clavio revenue. It's like, hey, for every dollar you pay us, I have to give you 10 back. There's, I have to give you 10 back. Yeah. So it's, it's so much easier sell, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. If in in regards to so you mentioned uh, with your team, right? So you have this um, the the person who who does the so th they do the, the the flows, right? And they do the copy, correct? And then so the the way I structured it is like, um, for example, with the flows, it's completely like templatized almost. It's like I have a SOP for every flow, so it's exactly what trigger they need, exactly what filters they need. And then what does email one need to have in it? What does email two need to have in it? Like banner, mm. I don't know, like UGC call to action. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Or like direct response copy focusing on benefits, call to action. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it, it's, it removes, it's like a, uh, almost like a fill in the blank ex exercise for my copywriter. 
so yeah it, that's been a huge time saver for us mm -hmm. Um, moving on from from email marketing, and I think uh, I think that conversation was valuable, uh, especially for people who just think like, "Hey, should I only do Facebook ads?" No, like e-commerce e marketing agency can be a, a myriad of different services. Uh, now, it doesn't mean like for the people doing paid ads, like it doesn't mean paid ads doesn't work. Okay, paid ads works amazingly well. There's just different alternatives. Okay. Um, now going back, you know, because because you mentioned for you, uh, you know, before we jumped on the on the interview, like before, for you, like. The agency is purely a lifestyle business, right? I believe um, we started the, the mentorship. So we did the mentorship. Uh, then you scale your agency. I'm not sure if you share, are open to sharing numbers, but you scale the agency to that 20K per month, right, Mark? Um, so I did my best month, I did like 24K in profit or 22 or 24. I can't remember. Okay. Dollars, okay. Uh, in profit. No, that was October. So that was my okay. peak month. Uh, but then it really just went downhill. So I right. shot a few clients, which was. That's what I want to talk about, by the way. Close I, to I, 10K I, in retainers. And I was like, not retainer, sorry, like retainer plus performance. I was like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> and then to add on that, my, um, so that really uh, kind of, I don't know, hurt the feelings and hurt the confidence of my main media buyer. And he was being, he got offered equity and like a brand. So he just dipped. Uh, so that left me in a really weird situation, right? So I had a backup media buyer, uh, not backup, but I had a second media buyer. Yeah, yeah, he just took on all of the account, the rest of the accounts, and then I just realized, like, well, if I'm if I can't steer the ship, um, into from a fulfillment perspective, then I don't actually have hundred percent control of my business because media buying mm -hmm. is not something I'm interested in. Um, I find it interesting to talk about, but I don't find it interesting to actually execute on. Um, so I just looked at my business and I was like, hmm, where's where am I making the most money for, for like where my interest is maximized and my time is minimized? It's email marketing. So let's just kind of pivot to that. But then, you, you know, Jaime, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but from me scaling from zero to 32K took me less than 10 months. It was 32K revenue. So it took me less than 10 months. 32K per month. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought you meant so. Okay, cool. So, profit, so, so that was the highest. Profit, net okay. profit was twenty four k, thirty two k Okay, okay. Revenue. okay, okay, cool. So, up until that point, the the growth was like almost parabolic, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was gassed, and then that was the first time I had I felt on my face really hard, and that stressed mm -hmm. me out. And then, and that's when I realized, like, oh, okay, I've been working too long and too focused on the results. So I, 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 this is something going wrong here. And I didn't want me to like work myself uh, in, and spiral in out of control into like a depression or anything. Yeah. But December I took entirely off and then January I, I moved into this apartment and then started working yeah. on it. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to go, so I, I want to break it down because, because it's a lot to, to uncover and I think it'll be valuable because I think that journey is, is um, in and of itself is, is like a, a typical entrepreneurial journey. Um, and I, I think I think you did you know I, I think um, the way you approached it uh, that there's there's value to take away from that. So when you joined the mentorship, um, you were making how much? Probably like twenty five, uh, twenty five hundred, like two thousand something. Three point five. Okay, three point five. Okay, cool. Um, for the people watching, so you went uh, thirty five hundred, right, to then thirty thousand uh, rev, right. What do you think, what, what, what would you attribute, like, if you were to say, like, three things, what would you attribute um, that, that massive difference, like, that, that massive jump, that, and, and that exponential growth that you mentioned? Um, when I first joined your mentorship back in April last year, it was, like, uh, my, my sit I had systems for outreach, and I was booking in appointments, but it was, like, not as consistently, and I kind of... Um, my systems was like, you could click, looking back, you could clearly tell that I just taken one course and I was just going balls to the wall with it. Mm. And like really smashing my head against the desk mm. every day. But then you, you showed me a, a different side of outreach where it's like a lot more automated, not automated, but like I was able to shave time off essentially. And that's like the most valuable thing, right? Like to be able to just spend some money and save time, that's like the best thing. Mm. Um, Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that outside. No, that's true. That's okay. <clears throat> so 
once I got that system up and running, I was able to get my second client. And that was what kind of got the ball rolling. And I feel like the reason why I was able to do quite well last year is not actually because the rate at which I was able to acquire clients, because I mean, I only signed five last year, but um, it, it's actually entirely to do with my retention. So my first ever client, I still have him. Um, out of the five clients I signed, two of them, I, one of them I signed out of scarcity, which didn't pan out. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't the right fit. The second one was the, I don't know. I think, I feel like the, the um, client just kind of got jaded by how good the results were. And then when they started to dip a little bit, um, they just kind of was like, oh, we want better and left. Because we were turning 50K into a 320K. And then second month, we turned 50K into 269K or something. And then yeah. 50K into 220K. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. They, they pegged the result on the initial, but that's because they had like a huge retargeting pool of audiences that they just, they just yeah. didn't target. This so is the, uh, the, the one you told me about, right? With the, uh, what was it like the, it was either the jewelry or the meat, jewelry. the meat. Ju jewelry, jewelry. Okay, the jewelry, okay, cool, cool. So I did not expect them to leave us because, so, so that was really what kicked me in the teeth. Like the, yeah. the, the client that I signed out of scarcity, I get it, you know, results weren't there. Um, they, to be honest, they just weren't qualified for, for, for paid traffic. Like, mm. um, one of the really important things to take away from that experience for me, at least is like, if a client isn't currently qualified, don't sign them no matter what they tell you, like, oh, we're going to change and improve the website conversion rate in the next couple mm. of weeks and all this, just don't sign them because they're not going to do it unless you mm. do it for them, you know? It's like if in a relationship, right? Like if you get into a relationship with, with someone, it's like, oh, I'm going to change this person. Now nah, you're not. <laughs> You can only amplify that person or you can, I don't know, maybe change their mindset, but you cannot change their core uh, foundational. The description. And we even designed product pages for them, like on a graphic design. Like all you had to do was just plug it into your website and that was yeah. it. Didn't implement it. So it was just like, okay, yeah. we tried our best, whatever. But then that client that left us the one we were getting sick results for, I feel like it's just a case of I didn't set expectations I, uh, well enough. Um, yeah. And that, that in turn really hurt the feelings of my media buy, I guess, um, which ultimately led to the reason why he left. But looking back, I mean, he, he left for his own reasons and it shows that looking in hindsight, it was probably not a good fit anyways long term. So, yeah. Man. Well, Works with the media buyer? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I feel like if, um, I mean, him leaving was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me in terms of re me realizing that, okay, I don't want to stay, stick with just ads and email. I want to do just email. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I started doing just email. So I'm really thankful for that actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fact, even though it was mad stressful. Yeah. I, I've been having for, for a reason, I guess. Um, so, so then you regress back to what, like how much? Um, I never fell below I, I, 6.8 thousand pounds in revenue. Okay. That was, that was December. Oh no, sorry. That was January. I think I, January or December. I don't know. Okay. Either way is terrible month, right? I was okay. best believe I was stressed because I just, <laughs> I just uh, paid six months rent in advance on this apartment. Why? Why are you paying uh, in advance? I don't, know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like monthly payments. Like I, I, okay. I just want to be like, cool. I'm sorted. Cause the thing is last year I saved 80% of my income, 90% of my income. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, closer to 80, but so it's like, I have enough cash to live for the next two years on my current lifestyle. Don't need to make another penny. So yeah, then yeah. that's when I realized I was like, boy, I'm like, just chill. Like, take a step back, you know, you, you, you sh don't stress. It's, it's not that deep. Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, Jan January moved in here, started cranking work again. And then now I've doubled the monthly recurring. Um, and this month we're looking to increase by an, about another 50% because one client we signed last month, we're going to build them for performance this month. And that performance is going to be nice. Okay. Um, I, I want to talk because so in January, in, in December, right? You took like a, a full month off, right? Was that tough? Was that hard? Cause I know, I, I know naturally you're a pretty, 
And by the way, I think it's a it's a good decision, and it it takes honestly it take, it's harder to make that decision for uh, people just like us, right? Or just like, like so much FOMO, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yeah. I see I, for that, example, Kasim. Oh, I'm I'm meeting him tomorrow. I think um, I see Kasim. Like he he started what in September, and he's scaling, and then he's living his best life in Dubai, and I'm just like, man, stay in <laughs> yeah. your fucking lane. Stay in your lane. You got this. <laughs> Yeah so, yeah. so yeah, definitely. Like, it's very tough to take a break sometimes, for sure. What What helped you uh, during that time? Because for you know, for, for me even, um, like, I had to take like you know the past three months, like, I could just work on one single thing, and I had to like sacrifice so much, and it was like, it's so tough, right? You have to go into like, if I mean, FOMO kicks in, like, you know, you have to like go off social media because you need to focus on like your thing, you know, whether it's recharging or just focusing on one thing at a time. I, I don't know if you're. Uh going to share this on the interview but even not if not i would love to pick your brains on what you've been working on because i see them i see them um what is it no js no not no js um the the programming compiler thing on your laptop so i was like hmm. no j oh yeah I, I mean that that's not my that's, that's that's my cto right there who's actually my brother um yeah but um so uh, we, we can talk about it uh, but um what what helped you like take that break and like chill, so, so relax. to be honest I, i'm i'm sure you're the exact same i mean like last year because it was when you first year in business right there's no such thing as rest really like even on mm. your rest days you're constantly like nervous you're constantly like thinking about the way to stress man like yeah like it's it's like i don't know i i would so uh I would be on a call with my ex last year and she'd be like, yo, like you're still in work, but just, you need to chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. so it's like, uh, you're constantly thinking about it. There's no break. And I just really wanted some peace of mind for December. Um, yeah. So yeah. And I could spot the red flags in terms of like my mental health or whatever was, like, 100%. was going down. So I was like, okay, let me not run it to the ground like I did in 2019. Because 2019 was like horrible for me, dude. Like yeah. I worked so, so hard. And, yeah. Uh, I remember when I met you, I mean, the, here's the thing. I was in a similar spot myself, like in a similar, like um, not financially, but like, um, like you know, uh, in terms of mindset and, and mental health, uh, where it was just like, go, 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 like no rest. Like, yeah, you, you told me I, you were 15. I was like, man. <laughs> no, no, a hundred, dude, a hundred percent. Uh, now, now I have an energy coach now, like, um, you know, one of the things that it's, it's funny because you mentioned like your, your ex, like, um, like told you off, you know, and, 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 and for me, like, for example, um, I just got into a, a relationship and like having someone who, especially like a female energy, uh, who are much more in tune, who are much more in tune with their emotions and, and all that stuff. And, and who can actually like, I don't know, who find it easier, right. To relax or to like be more free like to be more loose right and not have a stick up their ass like that has been quite helpful for me to realize like focus dude, hey i need you here right now not like yeah to, to re- 100 and to realize like for, for those like watching you uh, for for those uh, watching this um like yeah that, that first year like it's gonna be stressful like you're gonna have a lot of cortisol running through your your veins like you know it's your your it's it's very rewarding uh, and 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 you're getting to know yourself. You're getting to know your limits. But it gets to a point where like, it's not complacency. It's just like, okay, now I need to add more balance to my life. It doesn't mean that you just like, fuck around all day and not do any work. But like, uh, your mental health should be a priority as well, right? And and that's something like uh, it's not talked uh, uh, um, about too much. But that's why I wanted to to pick your brain. Did did the break help, or did, was there like a, a a switching cost, like a switching period where it was just like you were still in work mode? Um, no, so, I mean, you can't really take the entire month off. Like, yeah, mm. laptop lifestyle, blah, blah, like all, all that's bullshit to be honest. But, mm. um, the, like I was still hopping on team calls. I just avoided any work that I didn't need to do or yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it was like, maybe I was working an hour a week during those four weeks, but that was kind of it. Um, an then, hour a week, an hour a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not, not including the calls, right? including the calls it was oh including the calls okay, okay. <laughs> yeah okay that, that's a pretty good break but yeah, yeah. mentally 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 that it was i don't know the first two weeks i was like oh my god the 
world is like collapsing around me. I work so yeah. hard, I'm gonna lose it all. But then yeah. I just realized like, I mean, worst case, okay, fine. I do lose it all. I do lose all the clients I've built up. So what? Like I still have X, like a fat amount in my bank. I can pay off all of my student loans and I know for a fact I have the skills to pick myself back up again. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's like you're, you know, me pivoting into e exclusively emails. It's not really me changing the agency. It's more like me using emails as the front end offer, whereas it used to be the Facebook ads that was the front end offer. So it's like I'm pivoting from experience. I'm not starting over again, even if I was to lose it all. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it, that that honestly, it feels like once once you realize that, it feels like you're opening your eyes and finally you're seeing the light. Because, yeah, like mental health, it, it really feels like that when when you're an entrepreneur. Like, you know, you've got so much pressure, and obviously at first you need that to to recharge yourself, right? Um, but then it gets to a point where like you have money in your bank, like you're making money, like you have most importantly you have the assets. You build yourself to a point where like you could make it again like it's not like you've won the lottery right like you've you've garnered all these skills that will make you will allow you to make money for the rest of your life like you will not ever go hungry and that's one of the things i, I one of the reasons why i love uh the econ marketing agency model right um like yo like it's it's not that deep <laughs> you know like like uh enjoy enjoy like uh, find find the little enjoyments in life because like at the end of the day like you're gonna die right like it's not just you know happiness is a fucking big thing you know yeah but but you know um one thing that i feel like really sets people like us apart from the average i don't know 20 21 year old like this was uh something that um a girl that i was uh dating made me realize so our default is work like our default, whenever we have spare time, is like, oh, I'm working. I, I, I want to do something. Like, let, let's, yeah, let's yeah. make some money or whatever, right? Um, but other people's default at our age is like, I don't know, like Netflix or I don't know what they do. Like, see their friends do BS. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I feel like that's that's really, really important. Like, you can't, you're, you're, so right now, for example, I'm working to work more. I'm not working to work less. I'm working to work more. I'm slowly like ramping up my capacity to work. Right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like every time you push yourself to that limit where it's like, okay, I see myself going downhill. Next time you get to a similar limit, you're going to have that extra 10% left in the tank because you're, it's like working out and building muscle, right? Like you, you've built that resistance to cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think what you just mentioned there, like the momentum and, and ramping things up is so important, man. Um, and realizing that like, because one of the traps that I fell into uh, in my entrepreneurial journey is like, okay, you ramp it up, you ramp it up to a point where like now you you are at the highest productivity you've ever been in your life. Things are like you just get up and things just seem to get done like this, you know, and, and you're getting like videos out, you're getting, you're talking to clients, you're signing, signing clients, talking to t like you're doing everything, right? And um, obviously that's not sustainable, but I don't know if this happened to you, to you, but then you've made that the normal, kind of like with your clients, right? Like you, you make them a ton of money in the first month, right? And that becomes the default. That becomes like the threshold. Now, anything below that is like, mm, it's not as good, right? And so for me, it was like, I get to that, to, to the maximum capacity. And now that becomes my normal, right? And so, uh, it's you like know. It's like hedonic adaptation, right? Like you adapt to mm. that level of work. So you think, okay, this is, because this is my new normal, anything below that is like, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. Like life is going downhill. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that creates stress, right? Because for example, like uh, I got back, I got back from my trip, right? And before my trip, that was like the most insane productivity I've ever had. Like literally like deep focus, like I would be able to crack, like no lie, like deep focus work, like six, eight hours a day, right? Which is quite a lot. Deep focus work, like be, you know, beats plugged in, like binaural beats, like just working, right? Uh, then I get back from the trip and pff, everything just create, like, Doing one thing just seems so yeah. tedious. It's just like, pff, man. You, you know, I, this morning, I, so last two weeks, I went on a bender. I was only going to take one week off, but I was I had a bit of a roller blading accident and I scraped the skin off my left butt cheek. Okay. Like I had Fuck. no skin. I had a, I couldn't That's sit that. down for like a week. Yeah, yeah. So um, this week, I, I'm only starting things again. And it's like, I, I saw my phone time and it was like four hours. And it's like, why? <laughs> and then today yeah. I, I had to get myself to go for a run in the morning at like one point, at like 0 0.8 miles. I was like, bro, like, 
this feels this is heavy work <laughs> like, this yeah, is yeah, yeah 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 so it's like ramping things back up a hundred percent and that's what what i want like people uh, watching this video like take away is like you have to ramp things up and the level of productivity that you're currently at is not your maximum productivity but it doesn't mean that you're not going to get there it's just like you have to take it slowly right um because like yeah like for example coming back now uh I'm, and if you don't if you don't like see it and if you don't know what's happening like you get stressed right the the train that i'm trying to get on is 20 kilometers it's, it's going at like 20 kilometers an hour uh, 200 kilometers an hour right um whereas like currently like i can go at like 50 kilometers an hour like that's you know so so you gotta like slowly ramp up but if you try to get on that train like you're gonna it's gonna crush you right you, you know one thing that i was really thinking to myself about uh over the last week is like consistency right because i feel like a lot of people misinterpret staying consistent they think staying consistent is like doing the same uh not doing the same thing but putting in the same amount of effort every single day for you for like years but it's actually not it's like it's like consistently being able to pick yourself back up from those dips because it's like mm. there's no you, even for example you're working at 50 percent capacity you're still not going to be able to maintain that indefinitely it's like you're still i don't know your, your girl calls you up and be like hey come over friday night we'll do a madness say less. <laughs> what's, a, what's a madness what's a madness <laughs> what's a madness i don't know like i don't know go to a party or something uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you get drunk and then three days after your sleep is still so it's mm. like you need to be able to consistently pick yourself yeah. up from all the dips and then it's yeah. like as long as you're consistently doing that and then consistently slowly ramping up you're gonna get that at some point uh-huh. yeah, yeah that's yeah. why i've gotten a lot more patient as well yeah. Like, i'm just yeah yeah, it's, it's like seeing the peaks and troughs. Um, and then also the different stages of like the year, you know? Uh, like I, I, the, the way I see it, for example, like um, maybe this is first from, from you, is like like there are some things that I just say no to. Uh, if if I'm at a stage, like, okay, let, let's just say, you know, uh, there's like three months, right, of, of the year, uh, you know, Q, Q1, right? Q1 is for work, right? Um, now within Q1, there's going to be peaks and troughs, right? Maybe like the last month of Q1, you are like, peak performance right maybe the first month of q1 you're like ramping up thing, uh, ramping things up now during that time i do like the the goal the objective is work right so i'm going to say no to things that are going to take me outside of that uh, and i'm going to kind of like prevent the the big dips right like for example alcohol really f- me up like really just messes everything up um like i don't know, like you know uh going out partying and not sleeping like right for one night will mess me up like for like the next four days me too <laughs> uh so so like that i say like those are hard no's um now in in a different in a different quarter of the year maybe like summer comes around then maybe i'll say i'll say yes to those things right uh but it's like understanding the different stages of of the year and then within the within the the micro right within the those stages like understanding the peaks and troughs and and and, you know pick productivity and ramping things up that's kind of I i think that's super important um one thing i i'm really proud of myself for developing this skill is i don't feel guilty for like taking a break anymore mm, um, that's massive and also, and also uh like if i do take a break i don't think about work anymore which is dope it's so nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't get anxious about it anymore like i don't yeah. feel like i'm missing out or whatever um, yeah and you smile more man i i feel like i've always smiled a lot i used I, to laugh more. but but it's, it's more it's more like it's, it's more like um inner peace smile you know yeah yeah like last year um i don't know when you spoke to me i would like giggle all the time and shit and i feel like that's just uh like my inner nervousness and anxiety is manifesting like when you're uncomfortable you laugh a lot mm-hmm. yeah i i think i think like uh, it's, it's become especially when you have more inner peace like it becomes very easy to tell like to to see your back your past self like you know th- whether a smile is like a, a true smile or like a true like inner peace smile or like just like a facade right and and also to see in in, in other people right um it's like okay this guy may be making a lot of money but he's not truly like he doesn't have much inner peace right and and spotting that and, and just being aware of that um because I, I think that's that's something that that people don't talk about much mm. So, so what would you say has been like a massive help to your journey? Because how, how, actually, one question I have is like, how long have you been doing this for? Because I'm in, I'm just in 
I've done this, uh, I've been in the game in terms of entrepreneurship for like a year and two months now. Yeah, yeah. For me, man, for me, like probably, I mean, since I was 16, uh, late, late 16, I was, I was like doing my little side hustle and all that stuff. Um, I would say like properly, like probably three years and a half, uh, three years, maybe. Like, like taking it seriously, right? Yeah, taking it, taking it very seriously and I'm making it like part of, part of my life. Um, because one of the things I feel like is really, I, I'm trying to find now and I was, uh, I was DMing Chase Dimon about this and it's like, I want to find I want to benchmark my own performance, but I'm not like, for example, I'm not going to bench my performance, benchmark my performance on where you're at currently because mm, you're mm. three years into it. So it's like, it's a bit stupid for me to compare myself to you, right? Like mm. you just have two years of, of experience managing emotions and doing all this stuff. Um, yeah. But I'm really curious to hear what like your year one looked like and how yeah. was our year ones compared, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and that's massive like uh, you know the, the, there's so many things that that were the, there's so many um like the, there's so many sources of to toxicity uh when when you start uh, an entrepreneurship like you know there's there's you know obviously most people i think uh me included uh operate out of a negative energy like a hundred percent i mean yeah you know it's yeah, like, like do you i hate where deep, i'm at right now yeah deep inside deep inside i i, I you know i i had to like really go inside right why am I do? Why do I need? Why do I want to make so much money? Right? right? Right. Like, is it is it is it because like I'm just acting out of my pure like like purpose or Bro, that's like that's um a very interesting conversation. We're definitely gonna come back to that. Um, mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. No. No. But but it, but even even leading on that conversation, like, okay, why am I making? Why do I need? Why do I wanna? started the business right and then this you know it's, it's when you start working with a uh an energy coach and and like uh whatever right uh all this stuff come you know comes up like oh insecurities like um the you know the, the, this this uh, this this um this um this like urge or this idea that like I know I'm better than most I know I know I'm better than most people like I know I'm better than like humanity so like I don't want to be mediocre like all this stuff comes up, man. You know, it's like 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 narcissism comes up, yeah. and like uh, um, what else? Like uh, you know, like n not allowing yourself to like not allowing yourself to take a break is is tough, man. Like it's 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 not it, it, you know mental. Yeah. Like when it comes to like mental health wise, like that's not healthy, you know. Like and and when you take a break, not being able, not not like feeling good. Right, it's not. It's not good. You know, it's not healthy. <laughs> so all this stuff co comes up now. When, in that first year, you bury like everything under a rug. Like you just like shove it under a rug and yeah, yeah, just like, want to yeah, get this done. Like <laughs> never, I, never. I, I need to be for, for me, yeah, for, yeah for, like the, the, you're not conscious about all these things. It's just like yeah, I'm just like working. Like I don't know why I feel this way, but I, I, I just, I just need to get to 10k a month. I just need to hit my goals and like cross them out. And when you do that, it feels really good. You know, like. You, you work your ass off like you you uh you can finally take care of yourself your loved ones all that stuff but then when you start making the money and you start hitting the goals right and all of a sudden you realize like shit it doesn't feel like i thought it would right I, i'm i'm kind of still in that stage right now like one of the things um i was so there's actually two points uh but for, first is like um I was in a stage where I was making enough money to the point where I'm like, I was like, oh, I need to get to 50K a month. But then I had no purpose to get there, right? So it's like, I'm not going to get there because genuinely, I just, I actually don't want it. I say I want it, but it's not actually what I want because yeah. it's like, yeah, I don't yeah. spend enough. And I take care of, I can take care of my parents if they need it already. So why make more, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was something that I had to really kind of like battle with for a while. And I still don't completely know, but I just know I'm, that I'm working on a trajectory to hit it right yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Like a, a lot, a lot of, you know, the, the entrepreneurial journey, a lot of like what it is for me, aside from the money, honestly, is a, a, a journey of, of self-discovery. Because if you don't go on that journey, then you don't really know like, okay, what truly, what, what, what do I truly want to do? And what do I truly want out of life? And what truly makes me happy, you know? Um, and, but yeah, as I said, like you, you start seeing like, it's not normal that when I hit a goal, it, like it shouldn't be normal that when I hit a goal, it doesn't feel very different. Right. Like sure. Enjoy the process and all that stuff. But like, 
if you hit a goal, like you should, you know, you sh you should you should not just think about the next goal, right? Uh, like there's something, this disconnect there, right? There's like um, like you're never because because then you realize like, are you ever gonna be satisfied? Are you ever gonna be uh fully like, you know, like full inside? And then my previous self would think, well, I I never want to be satisfied. I don't want to be full inside, yeah. right? Like I want to be, I want to, I, I always want to be chasing the next thing. Uh, that's like my old like entrepreneur self. Uh, self. But then you realize like, no, that's a really bad place to 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 uh, from where from where to act, right? Because it's not what you do, it's it's not what you actually do or what you achieve. Is the place from where you actually achieve it, right? Achieving something, achieving a big goal, being fine with yourself and being satisfied with yourself is a much better fucking stage. Am I am I at that stage yet? No, right? But I know, I know it is. I know it is, right? Because, because I have, I have some glimpses of like, hey, like I'm satisfied now. Like I'm, I'm happy with, with myself. Like I'm, I, I love myself. When I hit those goals, I'm like ten times ha happier, right? Because it's just like, oh, cool. But I'm not like, this doesn't fulfill me. Like I need the next thing, right? It's like a drug, right? Or, or, you're, you're just getting like you can. And, and the funny thing is like, um, it, uh, the, the money, and all the nice things, and all the successes, and all the accolades. They act a, a bit like a drug, right? Like you're constantly getting uh, hits of dopamine and and like, uh, you know, people saying like, oh, that's really cool. And like, you're, you're constantly getting these hits. So it masks all this like true emptiness, right? Or, or like uh, the, the, the lack of work that you've done on yourself. Make sense? And you can you can go for years. You can go for years with those hits, right? But, are, but if you take everything away, if you take everything away, if you take all the accolades, the success, the money, all that stuff, are you happy? Right. If you take like that, that's the big question, right? That's the big question that I ask myself. Like, if I were to take everything away, the apartment, the 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 friends, the family, the the girlfriend, the everything, the cars. Uh, uh, the, well, I don't have cars, but all, all the stuff, uh, all, all, all the the trips, everything, right? If you take everything away, and the accolades and the uh, the followers, if you take everything away, what's your default state? You know, what's your default Badness, state? Despair. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it's, it's all about that default state. If the default state is like unhappy, dissatisfied, empty. So, so do you get jaded when you tick a box now? Like when you hit a goal? You... <sighs> no, but no, but my, my, my goals have changed. Okay. You know, okay. um, cause I know things like I, I used to have a really, uh, beginner entrepreneur, Jaime, right. Used to have a really, like a very clearly mapped out plan right everything was just happening like it should be happening it was just like i don't know how this is happening like i'm literally manifesting every single stage i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs Dude, as bad every as it sounds, every entrepreneur every entrepreneur as bad as it sounds okay not every entrepreneur but but a hundred percent yeah yeah like we think we're better than you, at least I, in the beginning stages you know a hundred percent and and, like, and, and right. i'll let you continue but before i forget right yeah. it's and then what that causes is like this this taste and this for humanity like your view of humanity oh, right have you yeah, asked yourself 100%. your view of your view of humanity yeah. is like it's so <clears throat> jaded you know like like you see like you see people partying and you're like oh these people like why are they partying they should be working <laughs> right or you see like you see people like just having you, okay uh, you, you see people just having like a regular job like let's just say you're 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 grum you know you're you're like the barista right and you're like this person is worthless, you know. Like, Whoa, how are they not, not not worth, not worth? I'm I'm over exaggerating things, but like, uh, but like, how you know, you would you you would treat them differently. Why why would you treat? Why would most people treat them differently than a like high flying CEO? You know, like why? Mm. And and is this like maybe they're maybe they're much 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 happier than the high flying like super you know uh, CEO? Makes sense. Uh, it's like it's like basing basing character off of like what you have instead of who you are. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I see I see a lot of my uni mates and I'm like, yo, you're wasting your life, and I'm like having a go at them, right? And then mm -hmm. I just realized I was like, oh, but then they don't want the same thing. So now I'm like, yeah. I I don't judge people as much. I still do. I need. I'm trying to work on that, but it's like, yeah, yeah, it's tough to get rid of because once you start, it's once you see it, then it's like uh you because you fall into the trap of comparison right mm. and um yeah it gets gets a bit dangerous but that feeling of superiority like we're somehow like gifted <laughs> mm. 
to, to do more or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, what I want people to take away from this conversation uh, is like it, it shouldn't it shouldn't prevent you from like getting into entrepreneurship. Um, it's just it's just understand like it, it should actually it, it, I think it's it's really cool. The fact that like, oh, like you you start you start asking yourself like, who am I? Who am I with? Right? Because I, I think like if you if you don't get the money out of the way, if you don't get all the goals out of the way, then then you can't even access this this other paradigm. Most people cannot, at, at least, right? Unless you're like really woke, like you cannot really qu- like start questioning like, oh, like I've now I've, now I've like uh, achieved everything I wanted um, for this year in like three months. Like, but what now? You know. Um, so so that's why like I, I think like make the money, like do all, you know, build the business, have all the accolades, because that that shit helps, right? It gives you the financial location time freedom, right? But then understand that like hey there's probably more to that right than, than life and like it's, it's a really cool self-discovery journey like it's it's not to scare people off right it's just like yeah it's, it, it's just cool like to see like different people on like self-discovery and, and i think a lot of entrepreneurs just like again i don't want to judge but i feel like uh they get stuck forever inside that like never been satisfied never been content never been happy with like who they truly are they always need the, the the accolades right but like dude people can love you for like who you actually are but work on yourself you know like work on yourself but like i understand like like there's if you're constantly changing stuff you get to the end of your life and you realize like you, you look down and you be like oh shit i probably missed a missed a bunch of cool things as well there there is like a there is a lot of sac- sacrifice that you need to make uh when it comes to entrepreneurship mm-hmm. That's why I'm like busting my ass now. Like I would hate to make that sacrifice when I'm 30, mm. 40, when I have kids. Cause I'm, I'm not just sacrificing my time then. I'm sacrificing like my kids' time. Yeah. And, and my wife's time as well. Like the time that I can yeah. spend with them and stuff. But what do you think have been your biggest sacrifices? I'm right now? Sacrifices? To be honest, I don't really see this as a sacrifice. Cause it's like, I can't really imagine myself doing it any other way. Like, I don't know, when I was at uni, for example, I would, uh, I don't know, go clubbing, partying every other week or something. And I just remember distinctly, like, waking up the next morning and just feeling absolutely just empty and, like, drained. It was like nothingness. And I, I didn't do any drugs or anything. It was, it was just like, that was by nature, the feeling. Um, but there were periods last year and this year, earlier, uh, when I was, like, going quite hard, where I'd, be wa- I'd wake up with feeling... Um, like I know exactly what needs to be done today and I'm excited to execute on that. Um, and I feel like that's the feeling that I'm chasing now as opposed to the money right. side of things. And, and in terms of like um, routines and habits, like what do you think is, has, has been like a one, one of the, one or just one, like you would attribute most success to like this one routine? It's hard to say what that single routine is, um, but the journey that I went, I had to go on to find what works for me is mad. Because it's like, you, mm. you, um, I saw a TikTok yesterday that positioned it perfectly. It's like productivity is almost like a multi-level marketing scheme where it's like, you, you, at first you think you need to add more and add more, download this app, start journaling in this way, buy a bullet journal and do all this, like meditate 15 minutes. But mm. what actually ends up happening is like, when you finish your, awesome productivity routine you feel like you've already accomplished everything and you get end up getting absolutely nothing done so i've really kind of simplified my routine to the point where it's like i wake up i go for a run have a coffee decaf and then get straight to work and then the night before i'm like i plan the uh, the next day on a piece of paper and uh maybe i journal some thoughts down i read i sleep that's it nothing mm. nothing the same yeah but journaling oh that is journaling is powerful i feel like because it's like it helps you um break down yourself in terms of like okay i've noticed this trend in terms of yeah. how i'm feeling why am i feeling like this oh well it's because of maybe it's something that this person said or maybe i'm getting a bit insecure about how much money i'm making or whatever and then you really break it down and you're like hmm, okay cool i should I actually feel this way about this i should be feeling that way well, let, let's try to feel that way about this mm. and, then, and really start working on yourself. I think journaling for me is like super powerful. 100%. Dude, 
I think this has been a, a wide ranging conversation. Um, Definitely. And it's been good, man. I, I, look, uh, what I want to do with this is uh, student interviews and also so much be like, you know, say something about my mentorship. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but just, dude, but, uh, I, I even say it to like my students. I was like, so in terms of, um, I'd say courses got me to about 3K a month, but then your mentorship got me to 10K a month. 10K a month and beyond, I feel like it's just, it, it takes just consistently working because the systems have already been proven, right? You just need mm. to consistently chip away at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 100%, like, I'm so grateful to you. I think you're the dog's bollocks in the coaching space. Um, yeah, I think you're fucking dope. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you know, if, if I were to, like, wrap it up um, and, and kind of, like, sum up the conversation is, like, guys go go you know go on the journey right like you know do not be afraid of like uh because because i i know it might seem a, a very esoteric or like deep or woke a woke conversion right uh I like, like this, should, this should entrepreneurs we we might it might seem like we're doing a disservice but i actually you know i wish i wish uh more people were talking about this because like okay the mental side of things are like are you truly happy like i, I don't think it's, it's talked about enough um but i think like to get to that point, like you have to go on the journey, like, yeah. you know, not, not, not making enough money. Like it's, it's not cool. Like not building a business. If you want to build a business, it's not cool. Right. So like build a business and then go on this incredible, like self-discovery journey. And I understand that like, Hey, once you make the money, you realize there's more to life than money. Right. Yeah. Um, sure. Once you take care of your loved ones, like uh, take care of the world, like look at, look after humanity, like see how you can add value to like the human race. Like we're all, we're all in this together. We're a, we're a, we're a cool little family. Right. But yeah, you were going to say, um, I would love to hear more about what you're working on behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's been like two main things, right? Um, number one is being like building this, this like, um, essentially like we're building now our own, uh, our own, uh, proprietary, pr proprietary, I think that's the word, um, dashboard, um, Interesting. you know, the like incredible reporting system where we can like host of our, all of our clients, like it's connected, you know, the, yeah, so an, an API like integration with like Facebook and, um, and, you know, Shopify data and, uh, yeah. So, so basically we branded the agency to, to have like our own like software and I'm building into more of a SaaS because, um, I do want to productize as much as possible. Um, so, so that's, that's part of it. Um, and a bunch of that basically that that's like the agency side of things, right? Um, and then on the coaching side of things is just been building this monster, insane program called C uh, Sex Figure Ecom Agency, um, and it has like almost sixty hours of content. Uh, and then then it has the mentorship component, like where we have um, uh, twice a week we have uh, you know pretty much one to one calls, but I, I keep it super tight knit, right? So it feels like it, it's it's a mentorship. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it accessible to the masses. Like I'm not gonna have like a sales space where some kid can buy it for like a one k, you know. Um, uh, so so yeah, it's that that's kind of like a brief, dope dude. Little thing. Yeah, definitely. I I have no doubt that. Um, yeah, man. I, anyone that re wants coaching, I can I can recommend you hundred percent. All right, man. Um, I appreciate you for uh for coming on, man. Um, I think it's been a a really cool combo. Uh, it always is with you. Um, and yeah, wish you all the best. Hopefully, uh, it, you know, if if London fucking reopens, I think June June first, right? Uh, I will probably uh, I'll, I'll probably go to London uh, for a few days. I'll buy I'll buy Cause, cause, dinner. Because <laughs> now you're living in like what like around uh, Kensington, on, uh, South Kensington, Queensgate. You know Queensgate? Oh yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, Queensgate. Yeah, it's a nice area, man. I used to live around. Uh, I used to live around uh, High Street, Ken. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I I love the area, man. Um, yeah. It, it, funny story, right? So when I was a kid, uh, because my parents didn't have money or time or whatever, because and we lived on the outskirts of London every couple of months or whatever. We, my parents would take me to Hyde Park to feed ducks. So it was like a holiday destination. Yeah, yeah. So now, like, my flex with my parents is like, you wanted me to go to Imperial. I live opposite here. <laughs> Where I live right now is a holiday destination. So I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's dope. That's, that's always a proud moment. But yeah, man, I'm going to let you go. I've got to jump on a, another call. Um, but I wish you all the best, man. I I really do. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, this space is sometimes a bit murky. But uh, yeah, you've, you've got uh, someone who, who uh, someone can, can support you here. So uh, if you need anything, you, you've got me a, a message away. Um, right? Yeah, dude. 
Half a million this year in prof. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Um, so that, that's a goal, right? Half a million in profit. Yeah, pounds. Um, okay. I I feel like it's probably gonna come. Uh, ten percent of that to fifteen percent of that is gonna come from me doing agency consulting. Uh, maybe thirty percent of that is gonna come from my crypto trading. Cryptos. <laughs> is doing yeah. sick really. yeah uh and then the rest probably agency or e-commerce oh, yeah. let's get it yeah keep me updated but um we'll speak soon man uh, we'll all right have a good great rest of your day you too man i appreciate you for coming on bye-bye but -bye. all right so that is that for the conversation with boyan very very interesting uh, conversation um not the typical sma e-commerce agency conversation uh, and I, you know, hopefully you guys appreciate that. Um, you know, we really opened up and we talked about happiness, we talked about mental health, which I think, you know, are, are very important topics uh, when it comes to the entrepreneurial journey. And um, we talked about email marketing. We also talked about the e agency journey and a bunch of other really, really cool topics. Hopefully you saw that, yes, it's really important that you go on that journey, right? Make the money for yourself, go through those experiences yourself, go through those paradigms to then understand them, okay? My goal behind the conversation regarding mental health and happiness is not to um, you know, to scare you away from starting a business. In fact, it should motivate you because you can access all these paradigms early on in the journey. So you can start realizing these things early on in your life. So later on in your life, you know what actually makes you happy and you can structure your life around those things. So really hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. Really hope you could take a lot of nuggets away from it. Now, if you want results like Boyan and you're willing to work for it, you just need the right map. You just need the right guidance. I recommend you check out my mentorship. I will leave a link down below. I will be the first link in the description. You can go ahead and book in a time that works best for you and you can jump on a call with myself and my team and we'll see if you're a good fit for the mentorship. So that is that for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.